Hey there, Rob here with a custom Revit Electrical family creation, a motor electrical connection that is just an annotative symbol with no 3D geometry. Let's get right into it. So this is what we're going to make. See this symbol here? It is just a annotative symbol that stays the same size no matter what scale my drawing's at. And in it, contains electrical connection information like load classification, motor phase, motor voltage, and the motor load. And also a few other things that we use in our equipment schedule. So this is a custom family that we have created for our use. We don't need a 3D object within our model for these connections. These would be for connecting things like the plumbing domestic pump in this case, or down here elevators. We don't need a 3D object for these. They're just a symbol. It's a two-step process to do this. So you might think at first, let's just create an electrical fixture from the raw Revit template with an electrical connection in it, and then we'll just put that in. We can draw the symbol inside that and then just bring it in. Well, that doesn't work because it is not annotative. And let me show you. So here is one that I made that is just an electrical fixture from the electrical fixture template. And I've put in the electrical connection right here, connector element for the electrical information. I've gone ahead and drawn in with symbolic lines the symbol. As you can see, it's a very thick line because I'm drawing it at actual what you might call paper or sheet space dimensions, actual dimensions for a symbol of eighth inch circle, eighth inch square with the fuse indicator. And so I've done that to show you that when I bring this into my model, it ends up thinking that it's actually an eighth inch by eighth inch physical device inside my model. It's rather than a symbol. So let me bring that symbol in. I'm going to load this in, into my tutorial project. I have it in here as just a test. So let's go to our electrical fixtures and we will find this little test symbol. So I bring this in, and first of all, you can see I have to zoom way in. Well, it looks, looks like a blob. I'll put it in here, and I'll turn on the thin lines property so I can see it. Well, there it is. However, again, it is only an eighth of an inch. So in my model, it is microscopic. You can't see it. So I need to create something that actually is the proper size and is always the same eighth inch circle type symbol. So the way we do that is we have to create the annotation symbol first as a generic annotation. And then we bring that into our electrical fixture. So I just have a view here, gave you a simple chart here. Step one is we're going to create the annotation itself as a generic annotation from the template. And then we are going to create an electrical fixture using the electrical fixture template, an unhosted. We're going to insert the annotation from step one into this family. And then we will also add our electrical connection, the green circle, and map the parameters of that connection to our type so that we can get to those within our model. So let us start with step one, create this annotation. These are our family templates out of the box from Revit. And we want to go to annotations. And we want generic annotation right here. So let us open one of those. And it gives you some hints here about changing the family category if you need to. Because there's different kinds of annotation types. If you go up to this top left, you can see you can have generic annotations, which we're going to be leaving this as. Or you can have tags, pipe tags, duct tags, electrical tags. So if you're creating tags, you want to make sure you assign this to the proper family type. But we're going to leave this as a generic annotation. It's not a tag. So we're okay with that. And the insertion point is at the intersection of the reference planes. And then delete this note. We will do that. So since we are in a generic annotation, this is only a two-dimensional space. So what we have are reference lines, no reference planes. Planes are a 3D element. So we need to draw some reference lines. So it's similar to reference planes when you create a 3D model. So let us create some lines. We need both sides of our box, and then we also have a circle to deal with. So this is kind of the idea of what we need. First of all, we want it centered left and right. So we are going to add dimensions and put equal to make it equal. And then next we want to add some dimensions to this. So dimension from here to here, click there. And we can't just change this dimension. We need to set it up as a parameter first or a label. So go up here to create label. And this is just an internal label that we are going to use in this generic annotation only. So we don't need it outside the, the family. So width, and we can set this to eighth of an inch. 
And then these dimensions we also want to set as labels so that we can change those. We will set this as motor diameter. Again, this is just internal for this family, eighth inch. And then also dimension from here to here. Give it a name. Switch size. Set it to eighth of an inch. That way everything is dimensioned inside our family. So now we need to start creating the graphics. So up here under create, all we really have is lines and it's generic annotation lines or invisible lines. You can create different lines within this generic annotation if you want, but I find that the generic annotation line is perfect for our families. We can bump up the generic annotation line type within our model when we actually install it and they all follow the same line width. We're just gonna create some simple objects here. Now, this one is actually gonna be a circle, so we need a center point. So what we will do is draw some more reference lines diagonal and we will go ahead and create a line circle right here of that width for our motor and then we will also create a square for our disconnect switch graphics and let's get a handle on this guy with just lines and there's the middle point and just go over something that looks reasonable Again, this is just a symbol. And then for our motor, we like two little wings that come off it for a kind of an industry standard motor symbol. So we will just draw that. And to actually hit this point, that's why we also drew these cross lines. So we can hit the intersection here, go about a 45 degree angle, and just do something that looks right. And then just copy this guy using this point and that point to get it to look like the motor. And then the final thing I like to add is an F in here to indicate fused and we are going to control the visibility of that with a parameter that we can turn on and off in our model so that we can have it fused or unfused. So you could just use text and letter F. It doesn't seem to work as well because it has a masking area behind it and all that. So what I just do is simply create an F out of lines. So we will just create an F out of detail lines, something like this. And then we need to control the visibility of this F. The way we do that is select all the lines. And on the right, under graphics, you'll see this box called visible. And you can turn this on or off. Well, we want to map visibility of on or off to a type parameter so that we can control this when we insert this not only into our electrical family, but into our model. So visibility, we're going to go to this box over here. And we need to type in a family parameter, create one. We will call this fused. It's a common yes or no type of parameter. And we will put this under graphics. So that's where it shows up. And this can be an instance parameter so that we can control the fusibility of each motor as we insert it. So there's that. So now you can see here, we have a family parameter called fused which is the visibility of that fuse. So that is our annotative symbol. So we can save that. And I will just save it here under my tutorial folder called motor symbol. Now create a new electrical family. Here we are again in the Revit family templates. Under electrical, we have equipment, which would be panels and switchboards, which we don't want. We have electrical fixture, ceiling based. We don't want that. We don't want wall based. We just want a floating symbol, electrical fixture. So we'll create that. And then we need to insert our symbol into this. Insert, load family. And we want to load our motor symbol that we just drew. Now we need to drag that in here. So where is it? It's over here under annotation symbols. It's a motor symbol. So we can put that right there at the intersection. So the first thing I like to do is to make sure that I get this fuse visibility mapped to this new family we're creating. So I need to click on this and over here you can see that I have 
fused as a, an option, I need to click the little button there so I can map this to a new family parameter in this electrical family. So let's create fused. It's going to be instance and let's put it under graphics like we did before. So now we have it mapped a couple layers so that we can get to it in our family. So this is a you know example of a nested family where we have one type of family nested into another. So there we have that. Now we need to add the electrical connection to this family. So under create, go over to electrical connector. We're not doing conduit connector, a physical conduit. We're doing a logical electrical connector. And it needs a place to land. So we pick a work plane and it'll say, what work plane do you want? Well, we have a few of them. I like to put it on the reference level. So it just shows up like the big green circle. Now we click on that and we have all of our electrical properties that come in an electrical connector. So what we're going to do is we want this to be a balanced load. So if we have a multi-phase load, we want the load balanced on all phases. So go to power balanced, number of poles. We want this to be a family parameter that we can get to in our in our actual model. So again, we're going to map this number of poles to a family parameter called poles, which we need to create. It knows that we are looking for a number of poles type of parameter because we selected it first. So let's create that. Let's just call it poles. It knows it's electrical, knows it's a number of poles, and we want to list these all under electrical. Now this will be a type parameter because we want to create a separate type for each motor connection that has a defined set of parameters. So okay there. And then lagging we'll just leave. Load classification, we want to be able to control that because we may want to change it to an HVAC load, a plumbing load, or an elevator load. Let's create this parameter and let us call it load classification. Another type variable, let's put this under electrical so that it sorts together. What else do we have? Don't worry about that. Voltage, we want to control the voltage as well. Voltage, type variable, let's put it under electrical. And then create another one for the apparent load. This will be the total load of the motor, which will get divided amongst the multiple phases if we have a multi-phase motor. And apparent load. And it's power, electrical loads, electrical. So there we go. We have the parameters we need. If you click here, we can see that we have all the properties grouped under the electrical heading is what we were doing. So we have what we need and we can change the order of these if we want. We can type in some defaults. Uh, I like to put some kind of a default in here. Let's go with a 120 volt. So this is just a simple single phase 120 volt motor as a default. And we have our fused visibility controls here. So we should be good there. This really is the all there is to it. The trick is getting that annotative element made first and bringing it into our electrical model. So let us go ahead and save this as, as a motor connection. So now we will load this into our tutorial model that we've been using. So now we can see how it works. Click it in here, test it, click on it. What do we have over here? For an instance variable, we have our fused graphics, which we can turn off. Now you could also create another level of graphics for just the disconnect switch itself, if you ever need a motor without the disconnect switch. In fact, in our actual family down here, you can see that we have, we called it show disconnect or show fused. We have two levels of control. So you can go that far if you want to as well. For the time's sake, I just didn't show both of those, but you could do apply the same type of visibility control to the whole disconnect switch itself in that annotation. So now this guy can be circuited just like anything else. Let's go to a panel 1A. We can call this pump and there we go. Tag it. And now we have a two dimensional symbol, which if I change the scale of this plan, I'm at eighth inch. Let's go to quarter inch. You can see that the symbol, it looks smaller, but the symbol is actually still an eighth inch box, an eighth inch circle when it gets plotted at a quarter inch scale. So the symbols are annotative and changed size appropriately for whatever scale you're in. If you got something out of this, please hit the like button. Thanks. Thank you.